Welcome back to another lightsaber build. This is TXQ's OB 3.5, another take on the TV show Obi-Wan Hilt. The install solution for this is completely different than the Desert Wanderer from KR Sabers, as you might be able to tell from these chassis pieces. I actually got this chassis solution from Saber Bay, but when I tried putting the CFX in it and putting it in the hilt, it didn't fit, so I actually ended up having to redesign and print it myself in order to fix the problems. It took me quite a while to get this right. It's very hard to get a CFX to fit into such a small space. But while I was at it, I ended up making another one of my speaker booster rings. It'll serve the same purpose as the one from my previous build video. Now I'll move on to the other parts I'm going to be using. There's the NeoPixel connector that I just showed you, along with this really interesting button solution. Next is the NeoPixel and blade side connector for the removable chassis. And then of course we have the Crystal Focus soundboard and the 18650 lithium ion battery. Finally, we have the 28mm bass speaker, which is actually pretty significant because the original chassis could only fit a 24mm. And now with all the prep work out of the way, it's time to get started with the install. The first thing I want to do is take this whole thing apart. This is so we can have a better look at how it's set up and figure out the best way to start the install. Here's a closer look at the retention screws that'll hold in the blade plug and NeoPixel connector. And from the looks of it, this next section seems to be able to split into two parts, but I don't think that's necessary. Now that we have both the top and bottom sections of the lightsaber removed, we can focus on the control box. This control box is really what differentiates this hilt from the Desert Wanderer or any other lightsaber with a control box, really. As you can see, there's this little face plate at the end of the control box held in by these tiny screws, and that's meant to prevent the clamp card from sliding out. However, the card still rattles around, so I'll have to fix that later. Now this last part is what we're going to be setting up the buttons in. From the looks of it, that huge hole is where I'm going to set up the new connector I've never worked with. But now that I've taken everything apart and had a look at how everything goes together, I now have a general idea on how this install's going to go. So I think I'm going to start with the emitter and neck section first. As usual, I'm going to start with the NeoPixel connector. In order to solder all the pins in place, I like using my little hobby vise. It's a little better than helping hands because it allows me easier access to all the holes and keeps everything more steady and level. So after soldering the connectors in place and pre-tinning the pads, I'm actually not going to attach any wires yet. That will come a bit later. To finish the NeoPixel preparation, I just have to sand it to fit this holder. I'll do that off camera, so that we can get right to installing the blade side connector. Now that the wires are attached, I just have to put it in this very unique holder. It doesn't just hold the blade side connector, but also the button solution, which is actually what allows this hilt to have a removable chassis. But now that I know it fits in the hilt, I'm going to go off camera and secure it in place with some E6000. Now it's time to reattach the neck and the emitter. Once that's done, I can finally finish this section by installing the NeoPixel connector. This is by far the most nerve-wracking part of building a thin neck lightsaber. So I'm going to show you what I came up with to make this as easy as possible, with the highest chance of success that I've found so far. Once you're done wiring up the NeoPixel, make sure you secure it in its holder with some glue. After that, you're going to want to put some E6000 on the outside of the holder in order to stick it on the inside of the emitter. Then, instead of just pushing the NeoPixel holder into its spot, try to unscrew the emitter and neck section in order to pull it up the wires and meet the NeoPixel connector at the top. Now that the connector is where it's supposed to be, we can reattach the emitter and neck. I found that this method brings me the most success because it seems to put the least amount of tension on the wires. It's also way easier than trying to twist the NeoPixel connector holder directly and trying to push it in from there. It's important to note that for this method to work, you don't want to have the wires twisted beforehand. But once everything's back to where it's supposed to be, I like to use the blade plug to hold the NeoPixel connector holder in place while the glue cures. But with that, the entire top section is complete. Now we can move on to setting up the control box. This lightsaber install makes use of a part that I've never used before. This is a spring-loaded 3-connector contact. First, I have to solder on the wires that are going to be connecting to the buttons. Next, we have to fit this piece into the holder that we set up earlier. It works very similarly to how a NeoPixel connector works. It's what allows us to have the control box separate from the removable chassis. Now we have to put in the black plastic box that came with the hilt, along with the 3D printed button holder. Then we just have to attach the buttons to the wires from earlier. Now we just have to push them down to where they're supposed to be. I ended up having to add a little bit of glue to this entire control box area, including the clamp card, in order to prevent things from rattling around. The last thing to complete this control box is to screw back in the end plate. Now that the entire emitter, neck section, and control box is complete, we can work on installing the main chassis. The first thing we're going to do is set up the NeoPixel connector. Since my customer didn't want any extra features like chassis detection or a second data line, I'm just going to be attaching two 24-gauge negative wires, one 22-gauge positive wire, and one 30-gauge data line. 
After that, I'm just going to sand the connector so it can fit in the chassis. With the NeoPixel connector all set up, I think next I'm going to install the battery contacts. Starting with the negative contact, I thought it'd be easier to set up with it already in its place in the chassis. But with the positive contact, I could solder the wire to it like normal. And then to help hold it in place, I'm going to use some Loctite. And with that, we have the NeoPixel connector and the battery contacts all set up in the chassis. We are now on to installing the last three parts before the soundboard. This here is the chassis part of the three-prong connector set we set up earlier for the buttons. The main thing I had to keep in mind with this connector was to solder the wires in the same order as the previous one. That way the signals from the buttons are all going to the right place. And once this thing is glued down, I can move on to finish installing the NeoPixel connector in its spot on the chassis. Before gluing it all down, I'm going to solder the positive wire from the battery contact directly to the connector. With that, now the NeoPixel connector, the three-prong spring connector, and the battery tabs are all set up in the chassis. Now we have one final part before we can start installing the soundboard, and that's the 28mm bass speaker. Once this last wire is attached, this speaker is going to go right into the chassis. This lightsaber project is nearly completed now. The last step is to install this crystal focus soundboard and then we can test to see if it all works. And with that, everything in this lightsaber is connected. Let's take a look at how the chassis turned out. I gotta say, this turned out pretty clean. You can't even really see any wires. Now there is one last thing I need to do to complete this project though, and that's to glue in the booster ring I made to keep the chassis in place and prevent the speaker from hitting the pommel. The easiest way I found to do that is to put the glue on the ring, put the ring on top of the chassis, and then slowly screw in the pommel. Now I just have to wait a little bit to let the glue cure, and then once that's done, I can move on to testing to make sure everything works. Sounds promising so far. And the NeoPixel connector is working, so it looks like everything in this main part of the chassis is working perfectly. Now that we know that that works, it's time to put it inside the hilt and test to make sure everything there works. Nice! The buttons and emitter are working exactly how they should be. Now we just have one last thing to test. Let's put in a blade. I'll mention this here now since I won't have any time later, but my customer sent me some fonts to install. The idea was to have an Obi-Wan inspired font from each of the movies. Looks like my work here is done. And now for the fonts. This is from episode one. Episode two. This is from Clone Wars. Episode 3 The Kenobi TV Show Another version of the TV show font And finally, Episode 4 Thank you all for watching this build, and be sure to tune in for the next project.